Hello everybody, Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are going to be looking at Google's Resonance Audio SDK. Now you may ask yourself, first off, what is the Resonance Audio SDK? And second of all, why are we looking at it? And those are both great questions. First off, let's start with the why. Uh, Google, as of yesterday, just open sourced it. Um, so it is now available across all their various different platforms um, for free under the Apache source code license. Very liberal license. One of the um, it, along with the MIT license, basically allow you to do whatever you want for the most part. Um, so this is very much available for game developers, free of costs and easily modified. And the cool thing is, let's get into what it is. And Resonance Audio is basically a spatial or 3D space um, sound rendering library. Now, Google have actually gone about making um, it available for a number of different platforms. And the big push behind this is obviously VR and AR, uh, but it can obviously be used in just about any kind of gaming environment with 3D sound. Now it's designed to work best with headphones. So when you're listening to this example I've done today, hopefully they will carry across onto your device. I'm gonna render this out in stereo sound. Uh, ideally, if you listen to this in headphones, you'll get the most out of it, but it's a pretty crude example I'm gonna do. Uh, I basically just played around with the source code. I played around with the web API uh, to make this example, but it gives you an idea of how you can uh, utilize uh, residents and what exactly is involved. Um, so as you can see here, there are a number of plugins in addition to the core library. So there's an integration into Unity, Unreal, the FMOD and Weiss um, graphics, oh, sorry, audio uh, libraries. Uh, and then there's a web one as well as uh, Android Studio, various uh, DAW workstation uh, support plus iOS. And what it does, as you can see here, is basically renders the 3D world audio um, down to 2D in for, you know, for your headphones. So there's a number of pe competing technologies out there that do this. And keep in mind, this is not the same as like 5.1 or other virtualized 3D space. Um, instead, what this is rendering sound fields down to 2D. And what you're doing basically is you describe your world, you describe your sound effects, you describe your sound effects positions, and then this does the magic and makes them all work. So as I mentioned earlier, we are going to look at a very crude, um, Example, I threw together using their web uh, version uh, available over here. Uh, so without further ado, let's just take a look at the example I threw together. Now, um, let's hop over to my code, like so. Now, you'll see primary code here is straight out straight JavaScript. Over here, um, we've got various different source files that are being used here. I grabbed uh, three different sound effects, a bird chirping, a waterfall, and a woman laughing, just so we have three different you know points in audio. Um, and I'm gonna do various different things with them. So let's jump into my example. You see here, first off, um, this is bringing in the audio files. Uh, basically, this is our code there. Uh, these three variables are gonna track our position, so our ear in 3D space. Um, oh, no, sorry. That's the position of the laughing sound effect. Uh, this is the position of the uh, our actual ear in space. And then, um, for the waterfall, it's gonna always be at the origin at zero, zero, and I think I put it slightly above, but it's gonna stay stationary. And then I've also got a bird chirping that's gonna be randomly positioned around the user. Uh, every four seconds, I'm gonna randomly bird chirp in a different direction, sort of to mimic a 3D game space sound effect. Um, and let's walk through the code for creating this. First off, um, this has nothing to do with the library. This is straight out HTML5 code. Uh, we're creating an audio context within our browser to actually render our sound to. Um, speaking of sound, I know my voice is awful. Sorry, getting over a cold. Um, so if I sound a bit like a robot, that's why. Um, so next up, we've got uh, basically we're going to create our Resonix audio using the um, the browser's audio object, and then uh, we're going to connect. Uh, let's see, we connect it back up to the stereo out. Um, we set up a room. Now this is optional. Um, you can actually ignore it, and if you don't set up a room, uh, it's like uh, you know a wide open infinite world. But in this case, I actually created a room, and with the room, you've got this object. Basically, you define uh, various different materials that um, each surface is. So you see here, we got our floor set as grass, our ceiling set as grass. Don't ask me why, and then four heavy curtains all around. So that's going to change the way um, the sound reverberates off each of those surfaces. Now, if you had a case where, uh, say, the left side of your room was predominantly metal. Uh, you could go ahead and do that. Now, all of the uh, actual uh, material types are available in the documentation. Let's see if I get the reference up quickly. Um, right, web reference. So this is really all you got to go with, but you go down here. So you're mostly just dealing with two objects, sound sources and resonance audio. Resonance audio is what we're looking at right now. So we head on down here to the room materials. Okay, one second. 
you will see, again, the four different directions are defined, and then the materials you can set them at are these. So these are predefined audio rendering materials, so transparent acoustic tiles, uh, brick, painted brick, concrete, uh, heavy curtains, which is what we're using here, fiberglass insulation, etc. So you got these various different sound or materials that the sound will render off of in your 3D space. All right, back over to our code. So that's defining our room. So here we're saying our room is three meters by two and a half meters by 3.4 meters as a cube in 3D space. Um, we go ahead and set the properties, basically our dimensions and our materials are passed in so that it now knows how to render it room out. Uh, next up, we are going to do, and this is gonna be a lot of copy paste code. So basically I'm gonna do the same thing three times for different audio sources. So go ahead and create an audio object in your browser. Basically, this is your WAV file, uh, ideally uh, mono encoded. There is some documentation on how they want you to encode your WAV files. Um, but basically load a WAV audio source. Uh, in this case, you know, set the, uh, so create, sorry, create an audio file, set its file source. So in this case, I'm using uh, laugh.wave. You can see it's a file I've added locally. Um, I want it to loop, so I set loop equals true. Now keep in mind, audio element, this entire thing is again an HTML5 object, not a um, part of this SDK. And then here we're getting into the SDK part. So basically create medium element using it. Uh, so we, we create an element source. Uh, and then from that we create a source. Uh, that source, we connect it to the input of the other one. This seems a little superfluous. I don't know why they wouldn't do this automatically, but anyways, that's the case. And then we can do things is, for example, set the, um, the, the location of that source in 3D space. By default, we're gonna start at zero, zero, I think zero, zero, zero. Let me check, yeah, zero, zero, zero. So it's gonna start at the origin with us and it's gonna have a max rendering distance of three meters. So once it gets more than three meters away, we will no longer hear this audio file. And then you see here, I did the same thing uh, for the waterfall, almost 100% create straight copy and paste code, and also uh, for the bird noises. Now, they're a little bit different here, so let's start it off with just one item. So we're not going to, um, we're not going to play the second audio, we're just gonna have the woman laughing to start with. And this is my code to just randomly play um, the, um, the bird chirping sound within a meter of where the user is currently positioned. So let's go on a little bit more. Um, so you see here, resonance audio, I set the, the listener's position, it basically sets the ear location in 3D space. And then I have a bunch of very, very simple keyboard handlers that respond to a different set of keyboards. First off, on the arrow keys, I, I move the um, left and right, I move the, um, I don't know why I did this, but the Y axis, no, no, X. Yeah, so I move the X axis uh, by 0.1 meter um, in either direction, based off left and right. Uh, up and down, I do the Y axis, and then uh, page up, page down, I do the Z axis. So basically, this is moving the sound of laughter around our scene. Next up, I use the um, A and D key to do left and right panning of our actual ear within the scene. And you're gonna hear how this all works out uh, in a sec. So that's basically the entire scene um, done and rendered. Let's go ahead. So we've just got the lady laughing right now. So <laughs> play that out. So right now it is at the origin. And now I'm gonna move the source of the laughter. So I'm moving it to the right and you should immediately hear that. And I'll keep moving it. And then eventually it gets three meters away so we can no longer hear it. So move it slightly back into range. And now I'm gonna go all the way to the left. So it should be around center channel right now. And now it's panning off to the left. Like so. Now I'm gonna press space bar. This actually re it back to the zero, zero. So back to the normal. Now I'm gonna use the A and the D keys. And this is moving our ear. So I'm moving to the left. And you'll notice the sound is panning out to the right. Like so. And then I can move to the right, and you'll notice again the sound moving in the opposite direction. So you can move the audio around, or you can move the listener around, and you can hear how the various different things render out. And that's basically it. Now, um, I can go back to our scene. You know, let me shut that down so we don't have to listen to the maniacal laughter. So first off, let me bring in the full example. So now we're also going to have... Oops, one too far. So we are going to have a bird chirping and a waterfall playing. 
and it just shows you how you can add additional sounds to the scene. Uh, these don't move around, and this one, the bird chirp, is only after four seconds, and it's going to be randomly positioned. But this is a more sophisticated scene, I suppose you could say. So as it starts, the, um, the waterfall is basically going to be right on top of our head. Uh, so let us go. <laughs> so now we're in a waterfall. We've got the woman laughing. Let's move the woman out of the way. So she's moving really far to our right. So now she's far off to the right, and I'm going to move us far to the left. So we're going to be out of the waterfall. So there the waterfall is now to our right. We've moved to the left. Like so, so the waterfall should be getting more and more distant. And you hear the bird chirping. The bird chirp is going to be relative to our position. That's why I set it up to be basically uh, within a meter of any direction of our current location. But it's, you can hear it moving around the scene too. So each time it plays, it should be kind of randomly orientated around us. So it should be giving you that illusion of depth. And again, we got the waterfall to our right. And then the lady laughing, she is way to the right of the waterfall. So now I'm going to start moving us all the way to the right. Ready? Let's go. All right, so we're approaching the waterfall. We are just through the waterfall, moving to the right, and now we have our maniacal laughing lady showing up. There she is, she's to our right. The waterfall is now out of range. We just passed the lady. She is now moving far to our left. And she is now out of range. And the only thing I didn't show is, now I'm going to go up, up, there. up down, and this is the V axis. And back to normal, and now uh, Y axis, and backwards. So it's showing you moving around in the three dimensions uh, and the audio effects of it. Uh, it's it's a pretty straightforward, very easy to use library. I, I I'm quite impressed with it. Uh, I only kind of scratched on the surface of what you can do. So if you go on back over here. Um, to the full-on reference, it gives you a pretty good idea. So there's other materials we can play around with, uh, but you can also come in here and do things like for your sound. Uh, you can set the gain on it. You can set a, a, a matrix four for its location. Uh, you can set directivity pattern. Um, I'm not even really sure what that means, to be honest. You can set roll off, source width. So if your audio, you know, is from a large source or a small source. Um, and you can set the orientation of the audio. So basically you can have positional audio. That, so if you had like speakers that only came down in a certain direction or whatever, you can set that right here as well. And then you've got um, some similar options available. Not quite as much, but you can do some things in the uh, resonance audio overall as well, um, including set the speeds of sounds. Um, and we did room properties essentially. We did most of this. Uh, but basically, you know, you set up your, your world, you create your materials that represent the audio from the, you know, six different directions in your world, and then you set up sound sources. And that's kind of basically about it. It's a very straightforward, easy to use library. And um, as you saw, the code is pretty straightforward too. I'm going to do a text version of this as well. I will link that down below. So if you want to jump into this actual code, um, again, it's not clean. It was just me playing around, but you heard it in action. And if you didn't hear it, uh, if it didn't work out for you right, uh, I think that's an artifact of probably either the encoding process, YouTube, or the way you're playing it back. According to Google, by far and away, the best way to hear the difference in the variance is with a set of headphones. But you can see it's a pretty powerful solution. Um, now, I don't know what it offers over the built-in uh, 3D audio in Unreal Engine or uh, Unity. Like a lot of these engines already have this functionality in. Uh, so I don't know what the plugin adds on top of their additional support, but like I said, you've already got support in here for uh, Unity, Unreal, Android Studio, iOS, um, Web, which we used here, FMOD, and uh, Weiss. Uh, so it, it kind of can be integrated in however you want. And again, it's Apache open source license, so it's, it's definitely worth checking out. So if you're looking at implementing uh, 3D spatial audio in your game, uh, you might want to check out Resonance Audio, recently open sourced by Google. And once again, that code sample, I will link to Game From Scratch down below. So if you want to jump in and play around with it, uh, you can do so there. And I'll 
Nah, actually, I try not to put applets into the site that cause audio, so uh, you'll have to build it for yourself. Uh, but I will link that down below. All the audio files I uh, just took from freesound.org. Um, I don't think I kept any of the links, so unfortunately I can't share them with you, but just head over to Freesound and download whatever you want, convert them to mono, throw them in your game, and you should be good to go. Okay, that's it for now. Hope you found that useful. Uh, sorry about the voice and the voice changing. Uh, hopefully I'm better soon. Um, that's it. Uh, see you all later. Goodbye.